I'm actually the Michael Elliott Distinguished Research Fellow. So Michael Elliott was my predecessor here at Rothamsted and he invented a whole new class of insecticides. But my job uh, was really to try and control insects in different ways from using insecticides, particularly using things that insects have to do against them. And of course, we're mostly concerned with pest insects, though we're also working with beneficial insects, pollinators and insects that in turn take out pests, uh, but uh, mostly pest control. And so here we are interested in the way that the insects find their hosts, which are crops or ourselves, mosquitoes feeding on our blood, uh, or they can be uh, pests of farmed animals where they can deliver diseases and also cause nuisance. So a lot of our work is on how the insects find their hosts. And they do that by olfaction, by a sense of smell. And they're very clever at it. They can really discriminate different species of animals from a long way away. So a mosquito that specialises in biting human beings can find a human being lying down in the middle of a herd of cows in Africa. And uh, an insect that feeds on cruciferous plants can find cruciferous plants amongst a great range of of other plants using specific chemistry or mixtures of chemicals that these animals or plants produce that tell the insect that it's likely to be a good host. And by the same token, when the plant or the animal is attacked by insects, the plant or the animal that's under attack releases some chemical signals that attract in beneficial insects because they're interested in finding where their own hosts are. So these animals then come along and attack the herbivorous insect or the carnivorous insect that we're trying to control. So they do the job for us. The only problem is they need a bit of help in finding the pests. And so by manipulating the volatile signals that are produced when the plant or the animal is damaged by the insect host, uh, we can actually attract these beneficial insects into the crop or into the farmyard earlier than they would normally get there. And so they do a better job. For us. Well, on a small scale, you know a good job has been done when you can raise a farmer's standard of living from below subsistence. Often the farmers are actually starving. It's quite tragic that many of the people in the world starving at the moment are rural poor and they are indeed farmers. When you have a farmer that demonstrates that they can produce by this new technology sufficient food then you know you are succeeding. Just one farmer is enough because you know the approach works. When it's thousands of farmers and you can have a barraza, a farmer's party, and they, they all cheer to say how pleased they are with, uh, with the process that we've been developing, then you know it's having a real impact. And when they can start to use the slight excess of food that they start to create, and when they can start to use some of the companion plants that we use to deliver our signals for cattle and dairy goat forage, which means they produce milk, which they can sell and start to put the children into school more regularly with appropriate books and uniform. Then you know you are having a much bigger social impact. I came into science really uh, because of a great interest in, in natural history. I'm a chemist originally. Uh, but I, very early in my career, decided I wanted to try and do something useful with it. And so, I, although I believe that it is by the application of new science, rigorously studied and developed, nonetheless, I like it, I want it to have an impact. And certainly the work with my African colleagues, with African farmers, particularly very poor farmers, very small holding farmers, is the most rewarding work that I do indeed do.